The first question is, I have a question, is it permissible to cut some hair, but not all the hair? For example, if I was to cut the sides, but not the top or the middle of my head, would that be haram? Please explain. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade something called al-qaza'. Al-qaza'. As defined by Nafi' when he was asked, who was a student of Abdullah ibn Umar, what is the qaza that was forbidden by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, يَحْلِقَ بَعْضَ رَأْسِ الصَّبِي وَيَتْرُكَ بَعْضٍ That part of the child's head is shaved and other parts of the head are not shaved, it's left. And that hadith is collected by Bukhari and Muslim. The wording I've mentioned to you is the wording of al-imam Muslim. We would call a qaza what in English? A bald fade is one kind of qaza. What else? A mohawk, probably the most obvious qaza. What else? A reverse mohawk. What else? Any way that part of the head is shaved and the other part is left. Whether it's shaved by a razor or whether it's shaved by another mechanical device like clippers, it is shaving part of the head and leaving part of it. But you notice that the question wasn't about that. The question was about trimming part of the hair and leaving part of the hair. Some of the scholars, a great number of the scholars of this era, the likes of Sheikh bin Baz, the likes of Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, the likes of the Lejnatu Da'ima, they said that any time you trim part of the hair and leave part of the hair, then this is also part of the qaza. This also enters into the definition of qaza, because they're looking at the illa, they're looking at what's behind the prohibition. Who can guess? A reason, one of the reasons that the scholars mentioned for the qaza being forbidden. Uneven. The word is uneven. Imbalanced. Are we allowed to walk in one shoe and not the other shoe? No. There's balance that's required on our body. Are we allowed to sit in half of the shade and half of the sun? No. We have to provide balance to our body, either all the way in the sun or all the way in the shade. So we're not allowed to be imbalanced in our stances, in our character, in our dress and all of that. We have to be balanced and we have to give each body part its due right. So then the head likewise cannot be imbalanced by some hair on it and some parts bald or shorter hair. Or let's say bald because that's the actual definition by the companions in the early tabi'een. However, if you understood that, that's not really challengeable. That seems to be one of the most commonly mentioned illa to tahrim most commonly mentioned reasons for this prohibition is that it's an imbalance in your character. And Islam forbids imbalances, and specifically this one has been forbidden. So if that's the reasoning behind it, why doesn't that apply to trimming part of it and leaving part of it? That's called qiyas. When you look at a prohibition, and you look for the reason behind it, and you apply that reason to another situation, which is not exactly the same situation, but it shares a common attribute that is connected to the reason for the prohibition. That's called qiyas. That's making qiyas. And as mentioned to you, a lejna to da'ima, Shaykh bin Baz, Shaykh Saleh al-Fawzan, they said trimming part of the hair and leaving part of the hair, it's considered to be a qaza. Other scholars, they said no. Other scholars, they said, so long as it's not close to istisal, as long as it's not close to baldness, they have something called the, what's well, not a bald fade, but a tight fade. So you would still see the scalp. It wouldn't be that you see, like if your hair color is black, you wouldn't see just black. You would see through and you would see the scalp. You would see some hair there, but not bald. The scholars who allow trimming some of the hair, they say it cannot resemble baldness. It can't be close to baldness. So if a person trimmed, for example, part of the sides of his head in a way that wasn't a lot so that it resembles a big gigantic change, and this kind of thing would be allowed according to some scholars because of the generality or the base rule of dunya matters being permissible until there's a prohibition specifically for it. And when there's a prohibition, that prohibition is for that specific thing, not the generality of all haircuts. This was stated by Sheikh Saleh ibn Abdulaziz al Sheikh, And it seems to be a very fair statement in line with the uh, principles of prohibitions and the principles of our stance on dunya interactions, haircuts and whatnot. So we say haircuts are permissible so long as you avoid some things. Avoid the qaza. Avoid mohawks and things like that. Avoid haircuts that resemble that, that are close to that, like a very close fade. 
Avoid haircuts that are imitations of disbelieving people and their practices. Avoid haircuts for men that resemble hair of the women. Likewise for the women, avoid haircuts and hairstyles that resemble the hairstyles of the men. What else? Avoid any haircut or style that makes you appear as a fool. Even if it's not any of these previous things, like for example, dyeing your hair green or something like this. There may be no textual prohibition, but when you come in front of the people, they say, look at this idiot. And so you're no longer viewed as being a person of intellect or a person of any significant input into uh, discussions. So with that, realize that if the issue is between differing amongst the scholars, if you want safety to be away from any problematic matters, then shave your head entirely or trim your hair entirely with the same length yeah, or leave your hair to grow long. These three options are available to you and no one would say there's a problem with any of these. However, once you get into trimming part of the hair and leaving part of the hair, we have some very notable, respected scholars who say this is from the prohibition of Al-Qaza. And Allah Ta'ala knows best.